song prayer, song announcement. So, uh, Andrew, yeah, a little samurai guy back here. Come on forward, give us a prayer. Samurai style. Sometimes it's just better to surprise folks, right? Sometimes it's better to surprise folks. All right, close your eyes, bow your heads. You want to, uh, dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Uh, we come before you humbly as your servants and as uh, people just worshiping in your glory because um, without you we're nothing. Uh, we're dead without you, Lord. Uh, we just pray for uh, people going through uh, trauma right now, uh, whether it's somebody dying, cancer, uh, sickness. We pray for healing in uh, people's hearts and in their lives physically. Um, just uh, have this message pierce our hearts today and that we just bring glory to you throughout the week and be witnesses um, when we see someone on the side of the road that we just uh, are encouraged through your Holy Spirit to do something about it that we can pass by. Um, thank you for everything. All glory be to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. is our connection cards. And the connection cards are for prayer requests. If you need help with something, 
if you need, if you just want to connect some reason, you can write that information down there, put it in the cards. We pray over prayer requests. We distribute it to a group that do that. And also the rotor team, you'll probably get one or two phone calls back if you put a phone number contact on there. We'll be happy to get involved with that. We are taking photographs of our regulars. We try to put names and faces. It's very important because it's kind of a fluid mission we got going here. People coming in every week, first timers, and then we have people are here all the time. Y'all look the same to me because I've seen every one of you. So go to the back at the end of the service. You come here on a regular basis. We'll take your picture and we'll match it to a name. We're doing a little directory so we can find you. And if your prayer request comes in, we always try to look there first, see if we can figure out who you are uh, and match that back together. We're going to be starting in January for our regulars, a, uh, a small group, or for anyone who wants to be on it. We're doing a small group uh, uh, gathering starting in January. Jeremy's leading one group, I'm leading one, John is leading that, and a lot of people here, Jeremy's going to talk more about it. But if you look in your, uh, in your blue uh, bulletin, you'll see a little note about how to reach out by email to get involved in that. We'd love to have you in there. Uh, speaking of t-shirts, we, we have a few over here, but uh, really, start, starting this week, all the t-shirts are going to be sold out of the uh, gift shop in Florida Bama, and boy, we're turning that into a holy spot, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at those tank tops, and I'm thinking, wow, okay, um, that's different. Uh, we do have a few up here. Uh, that is, no, 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 no form. Uh, no, but we do have, we do have our navigation table there. If you want a Bible, we, we'd love you to have the Word. And, and there's many people here that don't own a Bible. There's no reason that you come out of the service and you don't have a Bible, because we've been giving them away for two years. Right over here on this table, I'm nearly two years. You can come over there and get one for free. And kid, there's kids version as well if you want that. All right, here's the moment you've been waiting for. We're giving away this free t-shirt, and there'll be a little bit more on the pink today, but this free Florabama t-shirt to our furthest visitor. And you got to be further away than Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Michigan? Michigan. Grand Rapids. Oh, further than... Alberta. 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 Rapid City? Edmonton, Alberta. Edmonton, Alberta, John. Alberta, Canada. Al Al Alberta. Now, I did some math on that. That's up there. Up here. Anything else? Yeah. All right. Canada wins it. Give him a round of applause. funniest tweet you saw all week. <laughs> Tell me of a home where the storm clouds rise. 
emotional. This next song, Pour Out My Heart, this gets you, if you're up here, you're way down here, it just brings you there, right with him. This is just kind of my story. I'm so thankful I can come to him any time, good or bad. Here I am, once again. I pour out my heart, for I know that you hear every cry. You are listening, and no matter what state, my heart is in. You are faithful to answer the words that
So some of you, uh, you know, when we first started this out, I think Don and many others were like, yeah, we're, we're going to do a lot of this, but we're not going to preach. Whatever! You know, the Lord's got it. Um, but I'm also very grateful uh, that, that, the, um, that the national, uh, well, the college football season is over. I'm just, I'm very thankful. I am so thankful. Can I get an amen for those that are not Roll Tide fans? Amen. Let's just keep talking about the Jesus team for heaven's sakes. Man, you know, and, and, and I Amen, guess I saw yeah. it on the video, you know, the mascot showed up prior to the big game and, and just kind of paraded around. All right, that's that's just... All right, no more Roll Tide. Roll Tide? You got it. All right, so we are moving through. The small group, I do want to highlight, uh, we, many of us, both men and women, have just sensed that this is, this is awesome what God is doing out here. But in this next year, what we want to do is provide space for us to hear each other's stories, for us to come together as men, to just, just sit with one another and wrestle with those things that we wrestle with as men, as husbands and brothers and fathers and, um, and managers and any title that we have. But, but we come in a, in a smaller group, probably four or five is what we're looking at in each group. We've got leaders that'll be, uh, that are designated. And if that's something that you would like to be a part of, um, I would just invite you to send me an email, uh, as well as women. We're looking at, at, at having some of these groups. And when you meet, I put it in there, it'll be whatever the best time is for you as a group. Uh, you can meet out here, we can meet in Alabama, we can meet anywhere. But the key is to come together at least once a week for about an hour to pray, to read, a little, to read the Word, and, and just, it's that iron sharpening iron. It's, it's a very biblical, mandated thing. Um, we, are, we are in big trouble when we isolate, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the message today. But, uh, so I just invite you, it's an opportunity, it's, it's one of many ways that we're, we're hearing God leading us in that direction. So uh, if that interests you, please, please, please just send me an email, and we will, uh, we will answer any questions you might have there. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, oh, how you pour out upon us every single day. Lord, you meet us. You meet us in the midst of the storms. You meet us when things are so calm and we've got it all worked out. You meet us when we've turned and we've run as far away from you as we can. You, you just don't meet us there. We thank you and we praise you for that. We thank you that you've not given up on us. That our story, our story, when it intersects with yours, when we run into you, that's when we really begin to live. Help us to claim that anew in this new year. Such possibilities. If we'll just invite you in to take over all that we are. Be with those who mourn this day. Be with the men and women who are still at war on that battlefield. Be with the poor. Be with the homeless, the mothers that have those children and no place to call home. Be with those who are oppressed. Help us. Help us to be your kingdom here and now, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Jesus Christ in the floor of Alabama said. Amen. 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 I love story. I don't know about you, I was blessed to have a preschool uh, teacher as a mom, okay? So you know what that means? If you don't do well in English, you are on restriction for the entire school year, all right? <laughs> if you are not a good student, you are in deep trouble. Um, because for a year in and year out, my mom read us hundreds and thousands of stories. Just over and over and over again, just story after story. But what was beautiful is that she knew the stories and the pictures were wonderful and they were helpful to illustrate. But the way my mom told that story, I didn't even have to look at the pictures. She was, she was living it out before us. And she caught us. You know good storytellers, don't you? You need a friend that's a good storyteller because they need to be the, they're going to be the life of the party. All right, you're coming out and they're just going to start unpacking and everybody's going to gather around. It is tremendous. Friends I grew up with, you were the man if you told the best story. And, and in high school and junior high, that meant if you had the most girls that were surrounding you while you were telling the story, all right? You were a great storyteller. 
uh, then it moved on, and I met one of the greatest storytellers in a Comanche Indian in a ministry I was working with up in North Carolina. And when he sat and began to tell the story, oh my goodness, I just took out a pen and paper and just took notes on what he was saying. We all have a story, don't we? You have a story. And I submit to you today that as that story becomes his story, it's, it's life-changing. It's life-changing for the world, and it is kingdom work. It's kingdom work here and now. I, I love how in Matthew's Gospel, and actually all of them, uh, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as well as John, verse 34 there, you'll see. Uh, what I'd like to do in the weeks coming up ahead is we're going to take David's life and Jesus' life and see how those two merge together. Um, what I'd also like is as your bulletin, this is your note writing, that you're going to be taking notes. I know. We're asking a lot. We are. We are indeed. You, you're going to go, hey, this is where Jeremy went down a rabbit trail. I'm not even sure where he was going with that. All right. So you can email me that during the week. Uh, I had you till here and then lost you. Uh, and to write down other scriptures. We, I think the Word of God is something that we, we, we are constantly taking notes on. And we are growing, learning. And, and what it says to you is maybe not the same it said to me right now. And then when you read this again in Thursday to your neighbor, or you drop this evangelism document, okay? We don't hand out tracts. But, oh, how did that end up in my neighbor's mailbox? All right? Look, I'm just saying, all right? It's, it's just a way, all right? But you'll have the notes and you've been taking those. So I, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, and so from the weeks ahead, you'll, you'll have somewhat of an outline, and, and we'd like to give that to you as an offering in and of itself. But all Jesus did, this is what Matthew's saying, all he, Jesus did that day was tell stories. A long storytelling afternoon. His storytelling fulfilled the prophecy. I will open my mouth and tell stories. I will bring out into the open things hidden since the world's first day. He told in what? And, and, and other translations will say parables. He told parables. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, I, what was he saying? Like, why wouldn't you just come out and say it, Lord? You know, I mean, you've got this huge audience and, and you, you, you're tricking them. They're like, what, what does that mean? Salt and, 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 and shepherd, and I, I understand this, but the way you've just used it, it's different. You know, there's seed that are scattered, and, and, and what a good shepherd that comes, and then there's somebody that's, that's walking by a wounded person, and it's not our priest, and he actually is the one doing the grace. He told parables. And, and, and why is that? Because we are, we are people of story. We have stories. Stories are us. Every experience we have becomes a story. Uh, and it's, it's life-giving in many ways, as I've said, if we allow Him to come into our story. So, this, so the message there, your story or His? Is it your story or is it His story? Well, I know my story. And you, unfortunately, have to hear it Sunday to Sunday, don't you? Uh, here comes another kid's story. There goes Jeremy. Telling us about those toddlers and teenagers or jumping out of a plane. That's ridiculous, you know. But, but you hear my story, don't you? And I can tell you all about it. I can tell you about the messiness as I tried to understand what it was and as I lived for Jeremy and all of that. And we, we roll through that. What I want you to do in the four weeks, five weeks coming is I want you to read David's story. David's story is incredible. As I was reading it again, if you haven't read it, for the first time, please, this is your homework, all right? That's why I've put it right underneath my story. And you can't go, oh, I just forgot what our assignment was. Now, now, Snowbirds, I know I, I know we didn't give you a whole lot of homework last year, all right? Things are changing, all right? Now you're showing up for worship and you're getting homework, all right? So there's, there's the next. I'm just kidding. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But I, we're just inviting you to read along with us. 1 Samuel 16 and read through 1 Kings uh, chapter 2. All right, that's the David story. I want you to read it as if for the first time. Take notes. Look at David. What is so beautiful about the David story is that he is us. He is us. He starts out as a king and amazing. And he's anointed and selected and great. And you're like... Man, he kills lions and bears with his bare hands. Oh, that's a, that's a great guy. I want to be just like him. It's awesome. And then he's annoyed, and then he becomes king. And then he, he really acts like me. And he, he begins to sin. And he, he, he is literally a murderer. 
and he's an adulterer. And he, he is human through and through. But there is a deep connection in the Word of God. This deep connection is that as Jesus began his ministry, many, as he was casting out demons, they said, Son of David, what are you doing? What are you doing, Son of David? Get away from us. They made that connection because for history, people knew his story. They related to David. They walked the humanity of David. And we've got to do that again. It is so freeing. And I love how that David story, when it's coupled with the Christ story, and we begin to look at the red letters of Jesus, as I told you we would, it is powerful, the connection. Where David was completely human, we have the Lord of the universe who brings in divinity and his humanity. And he wants that for us. And he allows that gift to come through the Holy Spirit. But more to follow on that. So in the weeks ahead, we're going to talk about friends. We're going to talk about sanctuary. We're going to talk about imagination. We're going to talk about work and how all of that intersects with, with his life and with the Jesus story. Uh, the Bible says for everything. You need to underline this. Everything. That's, that's everything. Absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible. Everything got started in Him and finds its purpose in Him. Everything. Everything. Now, if you're here and your story has not intersected with His, we're going to be praying that it will. Maybe tomorrow, maybe in the weeks, maybe months ahead. Your story must intersect with His. It opens up. It teaches us. It, it just makes us anew in what our purpose is here and now. I love the uh, illustration. Maybe you've heard this. Uh, a reporter went out to a construction site, and they were trying to see the social reality for people and what they do uh, and how they relate to that. So they asked three construction workers, hey, what, what, what are you doing here? What's going on here? And the first one was like, making a living. I'm making a living. Can't you tell Making a living, doing what I'm doing. She goes over to the second one. What are you doing here? Is it not obvious? Do you see? I've got bricks. I've got mortar. And I'm, I'm, I'm laying bricks. And that's, that's what I do. And she goes over to the third one. And he steps back. And he looks at it and he goes, I'm building a sanctuary. I am building a sanctuary. I bet if you had asked those folks that were working on the floor of Bama, you would have gotten some similar responses, huh? Because they ended up coming to worship and they ended up telling their others, you wouldn't believe it, we're making a new worship center. It's incredible. A new worship center. We're, we're just kidding, it's still a bar. But nonetheless, they were catching that vision. They were seeing it. And, and, and if we are able, if you are allowed, if your story can start to come along, it is incredible what the Holy Spirit does. It gives us, he gives us new eyes to see that, that we're not just a doctor seeing patients and, and we're not just a teacher that's got students and I'm not just a neighbor to those neighbors that are living in my, my neighborhood. That, that just didn't happen. It wasn't coincidence. We begin to see that He has orchestrated all of this. That everything, everything that I'm about has purpose. And it intercedes there. It was a trick question, really. It's your story or His. It's both and. It is both and. As He continues to tell us in the Scriptures in John, in the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We had seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Underline circle. Grace and truth. That is interesting how that order is laid out before the Word of God. And how John was very intentional there. Grace precedes truth. Sisters and brothers, have you experienced it in your own lives when truth comes before grace? Let me show you how that works out. Jeremy, you don't read the King James only version of the Bible. You're going straight to the fiery pits. Because you're not reading the right word of God. Now that's truth for him, right? That was truth for him. 
But but I might have been able to have a conversation with him if he hadn't sent me to the fire pits right off the bat. Are you with me? Come with some love. Come come at me. All right, show me how God and Jesus does the great. As you see his life, as we read about those red letters and those scenarios that Christ, our Lord and Savior, you do not see him blasting them and judging them. You see him showing up where they are, how they are, and beginning to stand right there with them. And then, as you love them, and as they are loved in and through the Holy Spirit, then the grace and the truth opens its way right wide open, doesn't it? Doesn't that work in our lives? It is so powerful. That's his story. He wanted us to capture that. I've been here from the very beginning of time. The Word, that was my thought. That's me. We are one. We have been there from the very start. And I love the way John needed to get that out from the very telling of his gospel. From his story, he wanted us to have that. It was so powerful. On New Year's Eve, we were in the grace room. We called the support room, the floor bound of staff. It is really a given time. I think we, we, get, we get a lot more out of those nights than actually the floor band of staff do, honestly. They love on us. They ask us questions. We get to hear their stories. They hear some of ours. We go. We buy all the fixings of the food. If you're not familiar with it, it'll be coming up in mullet toss. Snowbirds, I dare you to stay over for another month or two. All right? We're going to need some help with mullet toss. All right? A couple people show up over here for a weekend. And we have a room, and they've wanted us. They've invited us in. And so Dave Marnell and, and the team kind of put all that together. And so all night until 2 in the morning. Did you know it stays open until about 2 or 3 in the morning? Okay, great. I didn't necessarily. Um, there, there are a lot of people still here. And so he, he had this grace, and, and, and it was there. And all we did was walk around and just... Just, just see the staff. Hey, you, you need a Red Bull? Okay, great. Good, good, good. And that's not illegal, by the way. All right, you can drink Red Bull. So we were handing that out. Water, peanut butter, jelly sandwich. What do, what do you need? Um, what was so powerful for Dave and I is that a new couple that's come here, and they're very active here, is so we're sitting and we ask a question. Hey, so what do you do? So Dave led in with that, and she began to tell us. God called us to this place. But he also gave me a talent, and this is what I do. I own this salon. Um, but what happened was, is God consumed us and said, that is not yours. That is not yours. That is mine. Everything about that salon has to be about my kingdom. Proceeds, free, all of the proceeds, everything that is happening in that place, I will redeem it and claim it as my own, and it will, I will live throughout that. David and I were like, What? That's not good business. But how are you paying the bills? You know? What on earth? And it just works. It works. It was profound. I wish I had faith like that many times. It's incredible. Because well, you see what had happened. For both the husband and wife, for, for them, their story has intersected with Christ's. And it's no longer theirs. It is now interwoven. Whatever he is telling them to do, they have to do. How he was showing them how to live, they have to live it out. And it was beautiful. And many of you are living that out for us. Thank you. We praise God for you, for the way you're coming here. We've got people, you guys have come here in the Winters, uh, Women's Care Center. You are so passionate about seeing abortion go by the wayside. And we are, that's part of our ministry and our story here now. Through the worship of the water here at, the, at, at, at Florabama. Some of you are the family. Um, we're reaching out to the homeless in an incredible way there. Uh, when we're housing them in the church in Orange Beach. And, and we need to do more of that. Do you see what happens when your story... And nothing... Hear me this. If you get one point. Nothing in your story yesterday and beyond before that. This present day. Nothing disqualifies you. Do you hear me say that? Nothing has made you so messy, God is not going to redeem it and use it for His kingdom. Do you hear that, church? There is nothing that you Amen. could have done or that you think you might Praise actually God. do today that disqualifies you from Him. It, it, it just, when it comes together and you're saying yes, it is then. Now you have interwoven that, and that's when real life begins. And that's what he was saying there. One other verse you can go back and look at uh, is Matthew 4.17. You won't see it in there. Uh, Mark also has it, and so does Luke. All three of the synoptics, um, they, they related one to another and had their copies as they were writing it for one another. 
I have come to declare that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Christ ushered that kingdom into being. He brought it to life. If we do anything this year, our question, our litmus test for what we're going to be doing out here and through Purdue Bay United Methodist Church, as we're doing all of this, as we're dreaming with our leaders, if it is not kingdom-based, why are we going to do it? If it's not going to help bring in His kingdom, somebody else can do it. Somebody else can do it. I have come to bring the kingdom and to bring it to life. And so that's what we want to be about. So that's His story. And we get glimpses of that. My story, his story, they're inter interwoven now. And then it becomes our story. Here what the Bible says about this. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us. On you. On you. Jeremiah even goes further. He says, while you were yet in your mother's womb. Remember, that was one of my favorite verses. He was knitting you together with purpose. He had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone, Paul was saying to the church in Ephesus. Do you get that? His, his vision for what we become together is so much greater than anything we could possibly imagine. It really is. It really is. People talk about what's been here for worship of the water and all that. It, we're barely breaking in. We are barely breaking in to what He is going to do. What He's going to do in and through us. We suffered, um, we suffered a great loss yesterday as a Worship of the Water community, as a family here. Um, we, we had to say goodbye to one of our brothers. Uh, Aubrey and Mary had been coming almost from, from day one. Um, they just, uh, Aubrey had, had it with the church. Didn't, didn't like a lot of what that was. It wrestled with that, as some of you. Amen? Yeah? yeah? And so he was led by the Spirit to come in this place. If, we, if this is the last worship service we have, and we don't do this ever again, Aubrey's testimony, his story, would have been worth us being out here. Would have been worth us being out here. Because what happened to Aubrey is he came out and the Spirit began to move and have his way with them. And he came out and he just he would worship with us and he'd ride his bike like Lance Armstrong and he was an incredible and all the neighbors and everybody knew him. I mean, this guy was living it. And he was such an amazing man that he was, he, he would usually wear pink. My church is at the floor back shirt. It takes a real man to wear a pink shirt. <laughs> You're not going to see me put this one back on again. <laughs> but Aubrey did that. And what was so beautiful about his story intersecting with this Christ story and our story together is that after every single worship service, Mary was telling us this yesterday, after every single worship service, he couldn't leave this holy place. He had to do a walkabout. You know why he did a walkabout? Because the Spirit had consumed him so much that this was his home. This is where he found God and God lived. And God had his way in this place. So he'd work through the main sanctuary. And he'd walk, they'd walk up the stairs and they'd walk over there. And as they brought visitors, which they did time and time again, he just did a walkabout in this holy place. Because it wasn't his story anymore. It was our story. And he'd have given it over to Christ. And they are grieving. We will celebrate his life sometime this week. Check the Facebook. We'll put that out as soon as we've been. We're going to celebrate his life. Because as his life was interwoven, we know that it's not over, is it, brothers and sisters? We know that Amen. that body is no longer ravaged by cancer. And he's got a whole new one. And he's with this great cloud of witnesses. Because he heard the story, he came to this place, and he allowed God to do something new with him. And that's what we must do. It's going to be an amazing year if we do that, when we do that. And we're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. I invite the band up, and as they do, and just open it up in a word of prayer. Gracious God, be with those areas of our lives in those, in those dark chambers, Lord, that we think that, that 
because of what we've done, because of what that is, that there's no way that there's anything redeemed in that story. And, and Lord, help us maybe just in this window to give you all that we are, to allow you access, finally, to just repent, to say we are nothing and you are everything. Help us to do that. Help us to do that. What a day this will be. What a week. What a life-changing year when we allow your story to take over ours. Teach us. Consume us. We love you, Father. Hear us as we pray to you. In your Son's name, amen. 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 Like Jeremy says, everybody has a story to tell. And... Jesus and Jeremy know my story probably belongs on the Jerry Springer show. I ran down here to get some peace in my life and I found worship on the water pretty much as it started within a month. And some of you folks know you see me out here crying through services. I'm just in a bad place. And this next song I'm going to sing is my story now since worship on the water and if it's your story too come on and sing along with me
Might we go forth boldly in the midst of death and in life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Love you. We'll see you next week. You guys help with the chairs. Kind of stack them up.